And I'm right here on Montclair. Right up the hill. I don't know if you can see up the hill, but the apartment's up there. That's where uh, 27th, 10th Ave. Right now I'm on Montclair, 9th Ave. This is a historic block for the Rolling Twenties. Also a historic block for the Black Peace Stones. But as I'm on 9th Avenue, it's a historic block for the Rolling Thirties too, the Crips. The Harlem Crips. Because as I show you, as I come down the street down here, about two blocks down is where Dennis Johnson and Michael Johnson live. Where they started, well the house, where the Harlem Crips started at. Right down the street, right here. Two blocks that way. I'm on 7th Avenue now, so two blocks that way is where Dennis Johnson and Michael Johnson live. I'm on 7th Avenue. And on 7th Avenue, it's at the back side of 6th Avenue Elementary School. Um, there was plenty of meetings here where the 30s would come. And they would meet here at the elementary school before they put these gates up. Matter of fact, Harold Mack lived right there. Harold Mack, Marlon Mack. So this is for show 30s for me. This is 30s neighborhood, right? Let me show y'all something real quick. Y'all see that building down the street? I don't know if y'all can see it. Can you see the building down the street? Well, that building is Blackstone 20s. That building is Montclair. That's a block away. So one block that way, you got Blackstones and Rolling 20s. Two blocks this way, you got where Dennis Johnson, Michael Johnson live. Two houses down this way, you got where Harold Mack lives, and it's the elementary school. So all down that way too is the rolling 30s, the Harlem Crips. Now we on Dinker in Jefferson. And that building right there at the corner. Go ahead, go. That building right there at the corner is where oh, some boys just stole out this market right here. Some boys just, just stole out that market right there. But look, that's what's so important is that this building right here is where uh, my homeboy Jay lived. My homeboy Jay, he lived in that first building right there, him and his mama. And uh, he had two younger brothers and a younger sister. So that side of the street is the rolling 20s. So of course, we would all be in there fixing low riders and stuff, a whole bunch of us. But his little brother and sister would come on this side of the street. And they came over here, which is the rolling 30s. And this liquor store right here is the Rolling 30s. And I don't know if y'all can see the park. You can't see the park down there, but it's two blocks down there. On the other side of that church, where that truck is. There's a box truck down there. You can see the top of the box truck. The box truck is in front of Dinker Park. So before there was a King Park, there was a Dinker Park. And it's right here. And I want to show y'all how close we are. So like if you cross the street, you in the 20s. Even though there's a couple dudes from 30s still lived on the other side of the street, they would just cross over. Even my homeboy Jay, his little sister and them, little brothers crossed over. But there's one street separating these neighborhoods. This is Dinkle Park, right down the street. They done rebuilt it because it didn't look like that at first. I just came the other way. I'm down here at uh, Normandy in Jefferson now. Now at Normandy in Jefferson. And you can see where I was standing. I don't know, maybe you can, maybe you can't. But if you could see where I was standing at Dinker, that's only like two blocks away. 
I'm at Normandy and Jefferson, and this side of the street is the 20s. This whole side of the street is the 20s. Going all the way this way, all the way to shit, wherever. But that side of the street over there, it's the Fruit Town Brims. 20s and Fruit Town Brims get along. I don't even remember having a fight with them dudes. You know, we done fought them near every neighborhood. We done fought Blackstones, Inglewood families, a whole bunch of gangs that we get along with. Shit, with B and G's. Oh man, them was our best friends, B and G's, but we, we fought every week. But this side of the street right here is the Harlem Crips. This is the Harlem Crips over here. Remember, I was just on the other side of the street. So for those of you who don't understand what I'm doing, I'm just showing how when the children leave, like this car wash right here, you know, shit, who gonna go to that car wash? You know, shit, I mean, I went there, but it's because I knew all the bloods, but all down there is the fruit towns. So this this is what I show you to show you that when somebody come out their house, say they come out their house over here, and they mama send them to the corner or something, to the cleaners or whatever, even though they might be comfortable at the cleaners, people could look out their windows who got beef with the other side of the street. That's, that's my whole point of doing these videos. It ain't to say that one gang is better than the other, but shit, right here at this intersection, is more bloods that get along than it is Crips. So the Crips would be outnumbered on this side of the street where they would outnumber uh, the bloods on the other side of the street. We call these the projects. They're not projects. They low income housing. And right here, this little brick area right here, sometimes there'll be a um, barbecue pit. There'll be a barbecue pit out there. Behind this building is called the Red Inn. The Red Inn is because the Crips used to disrespect Bloods by saying Red was dead. So instead of calling it the Dead Inn, it's called the Red Inn. But the University Gardens right here, 1250 West Jefferson. Wow, this right here is where the Fruit Town Brims, one of the main strong points, the Red Inn. This is not really what I want to show you though. I want to show you that we can stand over here in this yard, right here, and of course across the street is the 20s. But this is USC, one of the most prestigious schools in America, probably one of the top five, if not top five, definitely top ten. USC where they got million dollar people, million dollar babies, <laughs> right here. I don't know if you can see that sign. It says University of Southern California. I'm gonna get closer. What's really a trip is the fact that it says University of Southern California. Y'all see that? This is USC. I'm gonna show you where it is though across the street from what we call the project. It's across the street from the Rolling Twenties. Now these are all student homes. But before, there was a university movie theater back there. Different stores and stuff. 32nd Street Market. But if you want to see how L.A. is segregated, yeah, this is Vermont and Jefferson. And now the enemy isn't the Crips. The enemy is the police coming to get us. We the enemy. We the enemy over here because now they don't want us over here. So what's happening is gentrification is happening over here. All those years of shooting and killing at each other, the Crips and the Bloods, well now they want to take all this area, all this land. They got reversible mortgage. Prices is unaffordable. And the enemy is now gentrification. So look, I do these videos, man, not to highlight any one particular gang, even though I'm still pointing at the Rolling Twenties, just the 29th Street side, 29th Street and Fruit Town Brams, never had no issues. They were like one, one in the same gang, really. Um, but I do this to show that when our kids leave their house, that they're subjected to a number of things. Whether society didn't want us to leave, whether it's the Crips trying to get the Bloods or the Bloods trying to get the Crips. 
it's a number of different issues that, that, that are important in the streets that a lot of people don't think about when they send their kids to the school, when they send their kids to, to the bus stop, when they send their kids to the store. It's a lot of things that's going on in the community. And shit. If you don't know, and you're oblivious to it, you just don't know. But if you ain't ever walked in these shoes, if you ain't ever lived on these streets, then don't comment. Don't comment then. Don't give your opinion to something that you don't, you're not familiar with. Don't comment on something that this is your opinion, but you don't have nothing to validate it with. You ain't been shot over here. You ain't went to a funeral over here. You ain't been chased by the police over here. You ain't never went to the store and tried to figure out how you gonna get out when all them dudes came in. If you don't know, you don't know, and it's okay. All right.